okay, that was way too loud. Um, wait, um, so you guys can see my screen, right? Like, can, can someone let me know if they can see my screen? Like, am I, am I, am I drawing right now? I am drawing, right? Okay, good. Okay, so so let me let me let me start off with the hint, and then and then I'll talk about one one reduction first. Talk about some very important stuff, and then talk about the last reduction if I have time. I I know I know every TA will say, okay, what I'm covering today is very important. But what I mean is that like the reduction that I'm about to cover and like the, the tips aren't actually very important. Like the the last thing that I want to talk about, the 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 middle thing is very important. But uh, anyway, don't, don't let's not waste time. So. What was I gonna say? Now I'm blanking out. All right, okay, hint. Okay, so 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 let me let me elaborate on hint number one a bit. Uh, so in case you haven't you in case you haven't read the assignment yet, some people actually haven't surprisingly. Uh, you have two sides of a river, right? There is a teacher. Let's call this the teacher, and and there's some students, right? So like some poor students. Let's let's draw them as circles because they're not grown up enough to have bodies yet apparently, and and there's a boat. The boat has a capacity. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is that uh, the, the first thing for you to note is that some of these students hate each other. When they hate each other, let's, let's draw an edge between them. OK. Uh, and the, the, when, when I say bulk capacity here, let's, let's call that C plus 1. The reason why I say plus 1 is because uh, the plus 1 is going to hold the teacher, and the C is going to hold the students. So if I say C plus 1, it means you can hold C students. The teacher has to always be on the boat. The, the, the children can't, can't mind the boat by themselves. Okay, and the goal is to ver ferry, ferry across all the students to the other side. All right, now, of course, for large enough values of C, you can imagine how this would always be possible. Let's say, for example, I said C to be the, the number of all the students, then, well, sure, just ferry all the students across, right? Who cares if they hate each other? The teacher's always wrong, okay? Um, of course, if you set C to something really small, let's say, for example, C here should be equals to one, then again, this is uh, plain out impossible, right? Because no matter which one, one, one lucky student you pick to be alone with, the rest of them are gonna kill each other, right? So, and, and we don't want that. So, so of course, like for small values, it's not possible. For large values, it's definitely possible. This is kind of like what I cover. It's kind of like an independent set. We have the same thing, right? Large enough values is always possible. Small enough values is not, right? Um, so, so, so I, the the first observation that I wanted you guys to make, right? Which is like which, uh, which you know, like I like I'll I'll I'll, I'll give away for free, uh, is that. If you think about it, right? If I set if I set any value smaller, if I set okay, so if let's say this was the number of students, let's call the number of students n. Okay, if I set the capacity to be any value smaller than the n, so like any value smaller than n at all, so in other words, at, uh, not n, but let's say n minus one, n minus two, n minus three, that sort of thing, right? There is always going to be at least some poor amount of students left behind, right? Okay, so like. Um, you know, like for example, in this case, right, if let's say I set C is equal to two, I can carry two students, there's going to be at least another two students, uh, another three students left behind. See what I mean? Uh, like, it has to be the case, right? Okay. So uh, what does this tell you? This tells you that like, if I, if I set my capacity, right, I can force, and I know that the teacher has to ferry people over, I can force some amount of students to be left behind. Does that make sense? Like at best, right? If the teacher tries to like over like fit everyone on the boat, there's there are still going to be some poor kids that have to be left behind. As long as C is not the number of students, exactly the number of students, right? Somehow use this. Okay, so that's the first thing, right? And along those lines, right? You should ask yourself who can be left behind, like together. Who can you trust to to leave behind together? Well, of course, um, the the students that that don't have edges between them, right? Like for example, can this can if let's let's just say right hypothetically speaking, if let's say c was equal to two, right? Uh, like the teacher could, for example, be stupid and and bring these two students across, but then then you but that's bad, right? Because these two students have an edge between them, so so you don't want that, right? What you want to do is you want to pick the students out such that there are, there are no edges between them. Well, hey, that happens to be an independent set, right? Like for example, let's say we, the, the 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 teacher picked these these students these two students to ferry over across first, then there's no issue. Right, there's, there's, there's going to be no other edges that, that you need to worry about, right? Like this, this guy has no other edge to anyone else. This guy has no other edge to anyone else. This guy has no other edge to anyone else, right? Okay. Uh, I know some people have to told me about some vertex cover idea. I, I, I guarantee you that when I solved it, I had zero consideration for, for, for vertex cover. So let me save you some time right now. If you're thinking about vertex cover, don't, don't, <laughs> just don't, okay? So, so, so that's the first hint, all right? The first hint is that who should you trust to leave behind? Well, of course, the vertex cover. Right, find a way to set the capacity such that the vertex cover is left behind. Up uh, there, 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 the independent set, the independent set is left behind. 
See, this is what happens when people tell me about this cover. Then I think, then I think about this cover. Right. But, 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 yeah. Find a way to set the capacity such that the independence is left behind. All right. Now, this is in conjunction with the hint that was already given by prop. Right. The, the hint given by prop is that when I, when you want to solve the independent independence problem, right, you don't don't feed it just the graph. You have to feed it like two copies of like like in total two copies of the graph and and some edges in between. I'll figure out what the edges are. All right. So 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 the point is that like you 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 won't see one of these graphs. You're actually gonna see two of these. like if this was the original if this was the original input graph, then you you should be seeing two copies of this for the the ferry problem. All right, and some edges in between. I won't tell you what the edges are. Okay. Now, 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 what was the other thing? So that was hint one. Hint two is this, hint two is this. Um, the reason why it took me uh, more, like longer than I was comfortable solving it, right, was because I, I, I didn't think the teacher could do this one trick. I know this sounds like BuzzFeed right now, but like, I, I swear, it's, it's really this one trick that makes everything work. So one other reason why I didn't, I, I wasn't convinced that the teacher could ferry everyone over was because I, I didn't know he could do this. So let me, I, I don't want to give it to you. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm gonna give you a small example and you figure it out for the small example, then figure out what, what I'm trying to say by that and then extend it to, to the entire graph, all right? Let's say I have a triangle and my capacity here was two. So like, like in other words, my sorry, my capacity, my cap is going to be two plus one. So one for the teacher, two for the students, all right? Uh, how can I ferry this triangle across to the other side? It's possible, by the way, it's actually possible, all right? So, so figure out how to do it. You, you, like in case you think it's impossible, let me tell you right now, to solve it, right, you have to, you have to figure out how to solve it. So there, there is one thing that you have to do, one very specific thing that you have to do that I thought was counterintuitive and that's why it took me so long to solve it, all right? So, so I'm telling you right now, figure out how to transport. If I have a capacity of two plus one, this means that I have the teacher and the two, oh, I decapitated the teacher by accident. Uh, if I have the teacher and, and, and two students, right? Like I can, that means one student has to be left behind. Figure out how to, yeah, yeah. So, Thanks. You just you just like like shed it to everyone. Oh, yeah, I guess that works. Uh, take one child and, and have a round trip, right? So like take take two of these kids, move them over. Take one of the kids, bring it back. Take take the two kids and bring it forward again, All right? So so now that you know this, right? Now that you know this, somehow you you want to construct the graph such that this is going to happen, but not only for singular nodes. Uh, you know. So that's all I will say about that, All right? Now, now, when I like, like, I, like, I, I know someone, someone said this because, like, I, when I say that I'm, I'm, I'm almost giving the solution away, right? I don't mean that you're going to see how the solution works right now. So, 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 let me get this straight. Like, I, I, I like, don't be anxious right, about this. Like, when I say that I'm almost giving the solution away, I don't mean that you should see within five seconds and be like, ah, okay, this is how we solve it. That's not true, right? Because, like, when I give you solution, sometimes, like, you know, it takes more than like five, five minutes to figure it out to understand it. And that's that's fine. That's fine. You guys are still learning, right? But my point is that, like, when I say I'm almost giving it away, I mean like. If you guys just figure out how to draw the edges, and you know, like from th from then on, the, the the reduction is complete. Then you need to figure out like what, like how to, how to prove that it's correct. All right. So so but that's what I mean by I'm almost giving it away. Sit and like let my two hints stew at the back of your mind for a bit. All right. And I I promise you like this is like I I think these are the two most helpful hints that I can give, and I I I, I like promise me this is the best I can offer. Because I cannot think of anything else more to say besides how to draw the edges. So that's like the only thing left for you to sort of like figure out. And somehow conceptually, conceptually figure out how to use hint, the, the second hint, right? And and what I said about the first hint should already be enough to for you to figure out what I mean. Like like when, when I say when I say you can only trust the independent set to be on, on one side of the river and you should find it find a capacity such that you should force force it such that the independent set is left on that side of the river. Right, that like like that should that should be telling you something, and you need to draw the edges so that you you force the independent set as well, right? So so with, with with that in mind, that's all I'll say about that. Right, like okay, good luck with the assignment. <laughs> okay, so 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 let's begin. Let's begin. I have two reductions for you guys today. Goody goody, and and two some one very important thing, and like some stuff about MP and MP, and MP harness. Um. Okay, so let's do let's do one reduction first. Um. Let's see. Let's see. What's what's what was the reduction I was going to? All right. So so I actually didn't name it split wise, but apparently like I think the students somehow came out that name by themselves last semester. So this was an assignment. This was an assignment last semester that I set for the students. Uh, well, one of the two reductions that they had to do, not not just the one reduction. So don't don't be salty. Like this this reduction was easy, but that was because like it was one of those impromptu like. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So so let's talk about split wise. So split wise is going to be a problem where where, 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 where what. 
uh, okay, wait. Um, yeah, so it's a problem where you're given as input three things. So as input, you're given A, B, and C. Uh, no, it's not C, sorry. Uh, and K. Okay, so so let me explain the problem. It is This is a super relatable scenario, I feel. Uh, unless you don't have friends. Actually, I don't really have that many friends, but I, I still leave my friends anyway, so anyway. Um, you're going to have a set A, which is a set of people who are owed money. Okay, and you have a set B of people who, who owe money. Right, so think about like, for example, everyone went for hot pot and, and you know, some people some people chip, put their money together and they, they paid the bill, right? So the rest is, didn't pay for it yet. Now you have to like settle the, settle the debt, right? I don't know. Maybe 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 everyone is like still in their teenage years and no one has a has a debit card yet or like a credit card or something. Um, okay. So when I say set of people who are owed money, what you should think of is, for example, an array of integers. So like let's say for example six six uh three one. So let's say this is these are the set of people who are owed money. Okay. So I think in total here I have a total of uh what is this? This is sixty sixteen dollars old. Say okay. Now. Uh, people who owe money, right? Like it can be the same amount of people. It can be more. It can be less, right? But the but the one thing that you're given as a guarantee is that the of course the total amount of money owed is the same as the total of money that people owe, right? So for example, it could be something like five five three three, something like that. Okay. So, so um uh the 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 goal. I mean, of course. If, if I just give you these two sets, it's going to be can, like, can, can the people who owe money pay the people who owed money? And, and um, uh, the answer is obviously yes, right? Because the sum is the same. But I have, I, have a, I have a restraint here, the constraint here. And the constraint is that you can only do it, do it within, within K transactions. All right. So, so now this is tough. Right, like for example, let's say for this problem, right? Like I could ask the question, can I do it within four transactions? And and, and let me explain. Transactions, right, means like not like I, I'm not I'm not allowing like like exchange of money between like people here like this. I think like even actually even if you allow it, it's still not possible. Uh like it's still difficult, but 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 to make things simple for everyone, let's say that the, the transactions can only be from from someone from someone in B directly to someone in A and, and never like transferred like sideways. All right. So like Actually, I'm not even sure if like if it's four, can I actually do it? I don't think so because like, uh, like for example, let's say this guy has to pay this one, right? Then like this guy can like pay one dollar here and like his four dollars here. Actually, you know, let me, I I I'm pretty sure I'm reasonably confident this is difficult. Like, wait, did I even get the numbers right? Let's see, six six three one. So this is sixteen, right? This is five five three three. I'm pretty sure this is sixteen as well. So one three goes here, right? One five goes here. Uh, one five goes here, and then you need six. Yeah, you, you need six, right? So like one two one two three, and then this guy goes one two three. Yeah. So can you do it in four? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm I'm reasonably confident this is not the case. So so this problem is difficult. I mean, it's not difficult because I can't do it. I'll, I'll I'll mathematically prove to you it's difficult, right? But this is the problem. This is the first problem we're dealing with, right? So so think about it this way. Let's say like after I don't know twelve months of like eating out and like going to a hot pot or whatever, right? Like eventually. Over time, right? Some people like just know that they are in a deficit, and some people are in a, like you know, some people are in debit, and some people are in credit, right? And like these are all a group of friends, and somehow you know now it's COVID. You want to minimize the number of transact number of transactions that you have to make because it, it 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 means that you you meet with less people. Let's say that sort of thing, right? I don't know something like oh you have like social meetings of like less than five or like whatever. Okay, so 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 this is the first problem that we're dealing with, right? This is splitwise. So again, as input, what are we given? We as input we expect two sets. One set. Uh, to be the people who are owed money, one set to be the people who are who owe money, right? And these sets need to have the sum of these sets need to have the same value, okay? And uh, an integer k, right? This tells you how many transactions you have transactions you have to do it within, All right? So I hope everyone is comfortable with the problem, okay? Well, we want to show this is difficult, okay? So I'm going to reduce from a problem called partition. Let me explain partition in case anyone anyone here has not seen that before. Uh, zoom, zoom, zoom. This. Okay, so let's talk about partition. Okay, so partition is a problem where you're just given one set. Okay, so let's the input the input is really just like like a one to an all integers. Okay, and what you want to do for this problem what you want to do for this problem is 
I'm blanking out again. All right, so what you want to do for this problem is, is cut it into two sets. So if let's say this, this set, let's call that, I already use A, B, I already use A and B. So let's call this uh, set Z, okay? You want to you wanna partition this set into two smaller sets, X and Y. So if you remember what partition means from one, two, three, one, uh, if you don't remember what it means, it means that these two sets, right, are disjoint. So if I intersect them, they don't share any elements, right? And if I union them, they make up the, the whole set again. All right. So so that's what a partition is. Okay. So so I want to I want to cut these two. I want to divide these elements. Right. When I say that, I mean like okay, like partition them into two sets, such that right the sum of the items in, within the set is the same. All right. So for an example of such a set that I can do this with would be like one one. Let's say two four. Right. I can partition this. And then let me let me make it slightly more interesting. Let me put the four in the middle. Right. So so you can partition this for sure. Right. Th these two go into X. Okay. And these this one goes into Y. Okay. Then okay. Then 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 this is this is uh then you can partition it. Th this shows that you can partition it, right? Because then the sum of elements here is going to be four. The sum of the elements here is definitely going to be four. Right. So you can partition it. Remember, both the sets cannot share elements, all right? And you have to you have to take every element from the original set. That's what it means to partition it. Okay, so so when when if we can do this, we call it we 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 say that we can like you know like we find partitions such that the sum is sum is possible, right? And you might think about scenarios right where this is okay. Like like let me just, let me just say right, this isn't just like some some plain mathematical problem that that you. That you know you that someone someone was bought with and came up with the office one like in the office one day, like um you might be wondering when do we care about such problems right if, even su even so late into the semester, uh you can think about stuff like um what's it called uh fairness algorithmic fairness, so so let's say let's say you're working at some company right and you have like some resource you 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 you're the, the the guy behind some resource allocation algorithm, let's say you have like uh you know ten different clients twenty different clients. Uh, and this partition problem extends beyond two. By the way, you can think about partitioning to larger sets. It's it, it, the same. The same difficulty holds. Um, you you know you might you might have like for example twenty paying clients. They all pay the same amount. And I mean of course all of them will want to be treated better, right? But everyone being wanted to treat treated better just means that everyone should be treated the same. Uh, you know, uh, for example maybe you have like some ser server resource, um, like some server runtime on like, you know, some special runtime on your, 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 your server and your server like guarantees that they can do something for them. For example, right. You're selling, you're selling this as a service, right? Everyone pays the same amount. Right. Uh, and it just so happens that your, that, that resource that, that you, that you wish to allocate comes in atomic chunks. So in other words, you know, like the, the way that your server works is going to be that, Hey, I can offer like these, like this amount of the service, this amount of the service, and maybe like the amount of service is going to be like five, five, you know, like, 21, I mean, okay, maybe not 21, right? But you, but maybe something like five, five, like six, you know, five, five, like maybe three, two, one, 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 that sort of thing, right? You might, you might come out in values like this, right? And then you would say, hey, you know, I want to be able to like fairly allocate like this resource to all, to, to like, my, like you know, maybe it's a time sharing thing to all my clients, right? And everyone wants like it to be as fair as possible, right? You know, maybe, maybe splitting has makes a difference. Maybe this is like the trading world or something. I'm not sure, right? But the point is that if you want, like, even if you're talking about like social welfare, for example, right, you have like n atomic items that you wish to split so that everyone has equality, right? It's a difficult problem. You could, like, if you try to come up with an algorithm for this, you'll be losing like a lot of sleep, right? So partition is a difficult problem. So, so we, we do care about these kind of things, right? If someone finds a fast algorithm, that's good, you know, social welfare for all, but, but we don't know, right? So, so we're going to pretend anyway, like enough of the context, like uh, we're going to pretend this problem is difficult. We're going to pretend partition is difficult and we want to show that split wise is difficult. Right. So, 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 so now, now let me ask you guys a question, right? If I want to use, if I, if I'm going to use partition, right. To show, show split wise is difficult. Okay. Which direction should the reduction be? So fill in fill, fill in the blank here. Which direction should the reduction be? Partition to splitwise. Yeah, that's right. All right. So so remember remember if I want to show partition is uh, so if I want to show splitwise is difficult, right? You do the reduction like this because if you take the arrow here, you flip it, right? So this inequality tells you that if partition is hard, you can conclude hard. You can conclude 
that split wise is R. Okay. Okay, so that's how we're going to do the regression. Great. Um, okay, so so let me get rid of this. So so I want to do the reduction from partition to split wise. Okay, what this means is that I'm going to take the set, this set uh, Z that I have, right? Take this set Z and I want to output, I want to output uh, sets A, B and an integer K. Okay, so let me, let me show you how to do it. The reduction algorithm looks like this. Z is, oh, sorry, let me get that off my screen. Uh, the set Z is basically just going, like, let's just pretend this is like elements Z1 to Z n, right? These n elements. Okay, so let me output, let me output set A. Uh, A is the people who are owed money. So let me, okay, let me, let me use some, let me define this notation. S is going to be the sum of all the elements, right? So take all the elements first, sum them up, okay? That's going to be some value S. Okay, so uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna set A to be two, only two people who are owed money, S2 and S2. Okay, now in terms of the people who owe money, uh, all you have to do is just copy over the set. So Z1 to Zn again. All right, and then K is going to be set to the value N. That's it, this is the reduction. All right, so, so, so let, me, let me go through that one more time. Uh, to reduce from partition to 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 um, what is it to to split wise? Okay, you need to take a set Z that is that an input that is meant for partition and out and and basically give me an input that is meant for split wise, right? So given an input for partition, let's say Z one to Z n, to make my input for split wise, I'm going to construct. I have to construct three sets. All right, the first set that I'm going to construct is basically just me taking all the items in, in Z, summing them up and dividing by two. So item so person one is going to be owed that amount, person two is going to be owed the same amount. Okay. Um, now the, the other set is just copy paste. So just, just copy paste Z over here. Okay. Okay, and the last thing is that I want to set some, some limit on the number of transactions that can be made. Let's say it's N, right? I, I, I cannot, this is the smallest possible value, by the way. If I set K to be N minus one, this is like, this is always impossible because you have at least n people here. At least n people need to pay, right? So if you set it to n minus one, some guy is not paying. So you know that you, you cannot settle them like the bill, All right? Okay, good. So 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 let's let's show that this is let's show that this works. Okay. Um. So let me just cut it here. So so does the reduction run in polynomial time? Well, you're just adding some integers together and then you're just plopping those integers down. That's fine. That's polynomial time. Uh, you're just copying the set over. That's fine. That's polynomial time. You're just setting k to be equal to log n. That's fine. That's polynomial time. Uh, I'll talk more about what like this thing later. There's there's like some detail behind it. Um, so so now what we're gonna do is we wanna prove that we wanna prove that if you can partition, if you can, if you can partition, right? Then 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 like basically like split wise is solvable, right? Okay, so let's do that. So, so let me let me make let me make some let me make one very important observation first. Okay, let's say let's say okay. So so let's let's work in this assumption. If you can partition, right? So assume that you can partition. Assume partition possible. Okay, so let's let's think about let's think about that. So what does this mean? This means this means that if I have some set Z, right? Okay, given set Z, there exist sets X and Y such that okay. So so you know this joint. Joint such that sum of x, like sum of the items in x is equal to sum of the items in y. Okay, I mean this this is this is abuse of notation. I'm just saying that like take all the items in x and add them together. Take all the items in y and add them together. We know that they add to the same thing. This is this is what the partition problem is trying to solve, right? Okay, and we know that is this joint. We know that is this joint. So so all the items here are like come from the set from the original set Z, right? Uh, does if the partition refer to partition to transform input? No, no, no. Uh, if you can partition, uh, refers to it to partitioning the original input, right? So if you can, when I say if you can partition, I I mean yeah. Z. Good, good question. Good question. Yeah. All right. So 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 where was I? Right. So if I say some summing summing across items in X, remember since X and Y are disjoint, right? And they both take items from Z, right? What this means is that uh, all the items in X and all the items in Y are not shared, 
Okay, and if I would remember, if I were to union them, right, this is all the items in Z, right? So what do I know? I know, I also know that if I add all the items in X and then add all the items in Y, because again, these items are not shared and they cover all the items in Z, this has to be just all the items in Z, right? So in other words, this is just, this is really just S. Okay, so I know that sum of X, uh, X plus sum of Y is the same. And I know that if I add the two of them together, this gives me S, right? So what can I say? I can say that S is sum of X plus, this is just copying over. Since X is equal, sum of X is equal to sum of Y, this is the same as saying sum of X uh, plus sum of X, which is just, uh, so this is just saying that S is equals to two sum of X, right? And also likewise, X is equal to two sum of Y. Right, so in other words, sum of x here is equals to s over two. Sum of y here is equals to s over two. Okay. So, um, okay, so where was I going with that? Okay, so now we've made this, now we've made this observation. Let's talk about split wise, right? So this observation was made about partition. Let's talk about split wise now. So what does this tell us about split wise? Okay, so, so if I can partition, I can find, this means that I can find two subsets, right? Two subsets like of elements here that can, that there will sum exactly to S over two. Okay, so let's talk about this. So what can we do here? Well, B, we know that B has the same elements of Z, right? So we know that X and Y are, are also, uh, also partition B, right? Because B and Z are the same, same set, right? So, so we know, we assume that it was partitionable in, in, uh, in the original problem. Let's talk about, so then, then we know that because B is just the same set, we know that we can do the same thing to B, right? Uh, and, and the same thing still holds. So we know, what do we know? We know that summation of X is equals to, to S over two, right? So what can we do? We can pretend that these are the people who are, are the ones who owe money, right? So take out the people who are owed money, right? And in some set X, okay? We, we can just make them all pay the first person. And we know that the debt will be settled. So each person, so note that each person in X, right? Each person in X, in X only makes one transaction, right? They just have to pay their full amount to, to, to the first person, right? The remaining people who have not paid yet, they must be in set Y. They're all going to pay the second guy instead, okay? And we since we know that summation of Y is equals to S over two, right? The same thing applies. Each person pays, uh, uh, each person only makes one transaction, okay? You have N people, each of them make exactly one transaction, so there must be uh, at most n transactions being made. So splitwise is possible. All right, make sense? Okay. So so that's that's the first that's the the first part of the the um the proof, right? The yes implies yes. So let's do the no implies no. Uh, okay, it's taking too long to undo. Let me let me slowly erase. Let me erase everything. Uh, erase this. Erase this. Erase this. Erase this. Okay, so let's say let's say now it's let's say now it's like so we've we've shown that if you can partition Z, right, you can you can pay the money, right? Like everyone can everyone just makes one transaction. So 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 let me let me do the opposite direction. Um let me make one one important observation here. They are all important observations. <laughs> so dramatic. Um so since K is set to N, right? There's one thing that we can say about the people here actually, uh, which is that not only is it that uh so in the previous round, right, like we showed that they can make uh, exactly one transaction to settle everything. But the, the thing is that they actually only are allowed to only make one transaction because K is equals to N, right? Think, think about some poor guy, right? If let's say this guy has to make two transactions. So like one, like he, he has to um, sort of like pay a bit to the first person and pay a bit to the second person. Then this is bad. The reason why this, the reason why you're screwed if you do this is because um, this guy, this guy has now made two transactions, right? So if, if anyone, like if everyone else makes an, even at least one transaction, right, you're going to exceed, right? So the amount of transactions here is going to be M plus one or something, right? And we can't have that. So, so what we know is that everyone has to, has to make one, only one transaction each. And if everyone can only make one transaction, they have to, they have to all pay uh, their full amount because if they only make one transaction and they don't pay the full amount of money that they have, right? It's, it, um, they're going to they're going to have leftover money, so some, so the, the 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 bill isn't going to be settled. Make sense? Okay. So so okay, fine. Let's make the observation, right? 
Now, now, now let's, uh, I know I usually do the contrapositive trick, right? Which is what I showed you guys last week. So let me do one this time where we don't do the contrapositive thing, right? Uh, why? Because your 6-2, I think I couldn't do the contrapositive thing. So that it was it was very annoying. Like, I think you can still do it, but it, uh, it was it was surprisingly easier if I just went from no to no. Uh, so let me show you, in case you guys are worried, let me show you how to do it here. Uh, it will still roughly look the same thing, but some, for, but for some reason in my mind it's easier. <laughs> uh, okay, so so we're going to assume assume by contradiction, right? That the that the partition that you cannot partition it uh, cannot cannot can't partition Z. Partition Z, okay, but split wise can still be solved. Okay, at the end of the day, right, I'm going to want to get a contradiction out of this. Okay, so let me do that. Uh, assume that you can't partition Z. What does that mean? That means that means that you're you're never going to find. So so let me talk about this. What this means is that you're never going to find subset, let's say X, such that the sum of all the items in X is equal to S over two. You're never going to find that, all right? Um, well, okay, I like mm, yeah, 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 yeah. You're never going to find this. But think about it. If you if you could find such a subset, right? Then the remaining items uh, could be put into a set called Y, and this must also sum. You, this must also sum to S over two. Then you, then you would have a partition, right? But since we're assuming that you cannot partition, it must be the case that you cannot find such a subset. Okay. So so okay. That by by my assumption. We are assuming that you cannot partition Z. Okay, fine. This means that we cannot find a subset, cannot find a subset as it does this. All right. Assume now let's assume that splitwise is still solvable. All right. What does it mean if you assume that splitwise is still solvable? This means that everyone must have, you know, based on my previous observation, everyone must have only made exactly one transaction, right? Which means and since it's still solvable, let's just look at the first guy and ask, hey, who paid you? Since everyone, since everyone paid exactly one transaction, everyone must have committed their full amount of money to you, right? So just look at those people. Just, just collect those people, round them up, right? We know that this, these people are the same, like these people correspond to the same elements in Z, right? Okay, and we know that they all of them must have summed to S over two, right? So there must have been some set of, some, there must have exist uh, some subset of payers, let's say P subset of B, right? Such that uh, sum across all the items in P, this is equal to S over two. Right, but what do we know? We know that B B as a set is actually actually just equal to Z, right? So this means that exists a subset P subset of Z such that summation of P is equal to S over two. All right. Well, this is a contradiction, right? Because I I already said that we were never going to we already we we already concluded that we were never going to find such a subset such that we could sum to S over two. Then all of a sudden, right? If splitwise is solvable, hey, such a set exists. That's a contradiction, right? So if if you cannot solve, if you cannot partition, uh, if you cannot partition uh, the original input, you cannot solve the splitwise problem. So no implies no. All right. So so what can we conclude? We've just done a reduction from partition to splitwise. If we assume that partition is hard, splitwise is hard. All right. Okay. So. So let me let me let me let me erase this. Okay, and uh, so I've done one reduction. I know I promised another one, but we we'll, we have to see if we have time because like I need to cover the other things first. Okay, so uh, wait. So so does anyone have any questions about that reduction before I move on? I'll give you guys like a few seconds to think about whether whether you have a question. No questions? Okay. <laughs> okay, so first we prove partition is hard, uh, implies splitwise is hard, then partition is easy, implies splitwise is easy. Well, no, right? We're not proving, we're not proving, 
we're only proving that if partition is hard, splitwise is hard, right? Why would we prove that if partition is easy, splitwise is easy? There's, we're, we're not going to prove such a thing because partition is, is inherently what we believe to be a difficult problem. <laughs> we only have to do that one thing, right? We don't have to do like the, the second thing is, yeah, not part of all. No, 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 we don't have to do that. We're only going to, we're only going to do it in one direction. So in other words, in other words, right, all I'm showing, all I'm showing is that partition, right, is at, uh, is at most as hard as splitwise. Right. So if I do a reduction, right, and it only it only reduces from partition to split, right? It only shows this, and this is all I want. So when I say show split is hard, right? When I say go it doesn't help. <laughs> when I say when I say show split is hard, right? All right. All I I only need to assume I like I I only need to assume that partition is hard and it, it reduces and I only do this reduction one way. The reduction the other way says nothing. Like it doesn't help me in any way. If I if I do a reduction from split wise to partition, it doesn't say anything about split wise. Does it make sense? You only need to do the reduction one way. Yes. Like okay, like for example, if we say if, like like. If I, if I want to say split is hard, what does that mean? I just need to show this, right? I just need to show split is split is here, right? If I do the reduction the other way, right? It 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 just says it just says that split is like this. That that doesn't help me in any way, right? Does that make sense? So there is there is there is no need to there is no need for you to 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 do both directions. Just one direction will do. You don't you don't have to you don't have to put so much effort into doing reductions. <laughs> Even if you like them, right? Only one is enough. You don't have to do both. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh let's move on. Uh so so for the last week, right, and the first half of this tutorial, we've been talking about difficulty. Right? We've been we've been so so I know I've been kind of hand the concepts, but like basically. What we've actually been showing is that these problems are what we call NP hard. Okay, and I mean this is just a okay. So can I clarify? We prove yes partition implies yes split wise. We prove no partition implies no split wise. Yep, that's right. I, so so last week, if you remember, right? We, what we did was um, from three set to vertex cover. We said okay, look, if I can satisfy the three set formula, then there exists a vertex cover. And then we said okay, if the output of my reduction uh, had like the graph that comes out has a vertex cover, then the input three set formula has a uh, uh, is satisfiable. So that was the contrapositive, right? If you remember, we talked about this uh, at length in the Telegram chat, right? Uh, and, and that's one way to do things, right? You apply the contrapositive, right? Uh, but over here, uh, over here, uh, what, what I realized was that when I did this assignment, like 6 2, I realized that it's actually very difficult to do that contrapositive thing because. I mean, okay, like if you if you can do it by by all means, I think that's 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 great. Cause like, you know, I'm not saying because I can't do it, you guys can't do it. It's, I'm pretty sure it's like possible somehow. It's just that I like I, I felt like it it was kind of clunky, you know, you have to like worry about a lot of details. So then I realized that it was actually easier if I said um no independent set implies no possible way to ferry. So then I thought to myself, okay, like maybe today when I do split wise, right? I'll actually do no partition implies no split wise. Just so you guys have like a bit of ver like variation. Like so you guys have some freedom and you guys at least see see once like a no implies no, and, and you guys at least see once a contrapositive, which is like a yes of like the output instance implies a yes of the, the, the input instance, right? So that's the contrapositive of no implies no, all right? So, so I, I like at least now like, and, and this is recorded, so like if you guys need to revise, you guys can, can, can look at both again, right? So, so hopefully this helps. Okay, so uh, let's let's what was I gonna talk about? Right, so so one thing one thing that we've actually been doing is showing problems are actually what we call NP hard, right? Uh, and I know the name sounds scary, but all it's saying is so so I'm gonna say so let me let me write the definition down in case you guys haven't seen it before. Uh, a prob problem P problem P is NP hard if uh, exists uh, some other NP hard problem that reduces to it, all right? So, so all I'm like, like all the intuition that I've said about being difficult still applies. When I say something's MP hard, just, just pre in the context of 3230, if you're never moving beyond this module, um, 
I mean, if you do, I'm pretty sure you, you, should, you would actually already be familiar with this, but like, you know, like within the context of this module, right, to be safe, I have to say that uh, when I say something is hard, it just means it's NP-hard, right? Just tack on the word NP behind it, all right? So, so like last week, for example, we did the, uh, we did the three set to vertex cover reduction, right? So three set, we did the reduction from three set to vertex cover, right? What does this mean? Again, you know, like I always repeat like a mantra, this means that three set is at most as difficult as vertex cover. Take the arrowhead and you flip it, right? So I only need this. I don't need, I don't need the opposite direction as well, because then that would, that would be like uh, less than, and then like this way as well. I don't, so if I only want things to be, if I only want to show that vertex cover is difficult, right? And I'm allowed to assume that three set is a hard problem. We are, we are allowed to assume that this is an MP hard problem, right? I do the reduction, right? So I do this reduction. This reduction tells me, this reduction tells me, therefore, vertex cover is MP hard. Right? So, so this, this hopefully is not a new concept. All I'm, all I'm giving, all I'm doing is giving what I did last week and, and today a name. Right? If, if a problem is MP hard and you reduce it to another problem, that problem is MP hard as well, like, like this, right? So, so the same, I can say the same thing about partition and split wise, right? So like partition, partition is a difficult problem. Right. Uh, when I say difficult, what I mean is that this is a MP hard problem. Right. And I do. I what? What do I do? I do. A re, I did a reduction to a splitwise. Right. So what can I conclude? I can say, hey, this was MP hard. I did a reduction from an MP hard problem to a problem. So therefore, splitwise is MP hard. This is really. This is really just me saying. This is really just giving it a name. This, the whole thing still applies. If the original problem is difficult, you reduce it to a different problem. That problem is difficult. Uh, and, and you have to realize when MP hard here, what, we, what it means is that if you're a reasonable person, you would uh, you would not believe that there is a, a polynomial time solution. That's that's all, that's all that's saying. All right. Okay. So 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 so. Um. Uh, what what was I going to do next? All right. Okay. So so that that that's MP hard. Let's talk about NP. Okay. So NP is a different thing, right? So so please 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 do do not confuse NP for MP hard. These are not the same thing. They don't mean the same thing, all right? I know they both have the name MP in it, but when I say MP hard, it just means hard, all right? Uh, I know a lot of students who, who confuse this. So let me tell you right now, if you're paying attention, like MP is not the same thing, okay? Okay, um, what was I gonna say? Okay, so MP, MP, MP is a different set. MP is kind of interesting. MP is actually the set of all problems, the, the set of all problems that can be verified In poly time. Okay, so I I think this is I think this is like the like okay I like let me give you an intuition for this. It's not okay. So what I'm gonna say now isn't very formal. Before I talk about the formal stuff, right? But but think about how like let's say you like I don't know if you've played Sudoku before, for example. So Sudoku is like this nine by nine grid. So nine by nine grid. Like like let's let's make it general, right? So instead of a nine by nine grid, let's say that you have an n by n grid. And, and Sudoku actually has such generalizations. So like they end up doing like 16 by 16 grids, for example, where you have to deal with hex and stuff like that. Um, that, that sort of thing. So, so pretend you have an n by n grid, you know, and think, think about how difficult, like, I don't know if you tried to play Sudoku, but it's, it's really difficult. Like what you have to do with these problems is that you have, like every, every row and every column has to have like the sequence like one to n, right? And it cannot repeat numbers. You can't repeat numbers. It has to be like, since, since your row is of length n, you know, and you have to have every number between one and n, you can't repeat because if you repeat, some number is going to be left out, right? And every subgrid, I forgot how they do the, the divisions, but every subgrid, every subgrid also has like the numbers like one to n and every column has like the, row, the numbers one to n. This problem is really difficult. I don't know if you've tried. Um, it takes a long time. Like sometimes you have to like backtrack and stuff, you know, like, um, but, but the, the cool thing about this is if someone actually came up to you and just filled in the grid for you, like they say, okay, you put a nine here, put like a one here, put like a 20 here. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what numbers you, you can put with like within this, right? But like, let's say someone knew, someone knew, someone came to you and said, hey, what are you doing? This is the solution, right? They wrote the solution down for you, right? Uh, you could, you could verify that, like, you could tell whether he's lying or not. You could tell whether he's correct, right? In something like n squared time. You just need to look at a solution and just... Iterate through every row and see. Hey, did you repeat? Uh, did you did you mention every number between one to n? Go go through every column. Did you did you mention every number between one to n? Go through every subgrid and say, did you you know like uh, go through every number between one to n? This is this is a known squared algorithm. All of a sudden, right when you have a solution, the like you 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 would understand. Hey, you know it's a yes instance. You would say, hey, I uh, okay, I suddenly understand this problem. I know how to solve it. 
Same for vertex cover. So think about like vertex cover. We did that last week, right? We showed that it's it's difficult. The same way three side is difficult, right? Like I could give you a, I could give you a graph, right? Let's say a graph that looks like this. Right. And then, then I set K to some value. I don't know. Let's set K here to be three. Right. Then, then, like, then like someone asks you, right? Someone gives you the question like, Hey, I have this graph. Can you find me a vertex cover of size three? Right. Well, that's difficult. How, like, how do you, you know, like how, how do you tell whether it's possible or not? Right. Like we already, we already, we already showed this is a difficult problem. Someone gives you a graph, someone gives you an integer and asks you to find it, like asks you whether it's possible. Right. We don't expect a polynomial time solution for it. But all of a sudden, right? I mean, okay, wait, I, I can't set k to be three here. I actually, I actually like figured it out. Like you can't put three, you have to put four, I think. Right. But all of a sudden, if someone comes up to you and says, Hey, what are you doing? You know, like, like here's the let me propose a solution for you. Like put these two in, in the cover and then put these two in the cover. Right? And he's he's proposing you a solution. He would say, Okay, uh, so so to have a cover, all you have to do is take this vertex, this vertex, like the ones that I colored in red here, right? Then, then what you have to do? Then all of a sudden it's very easy, right? All you have to do is just iterate through all the edges. Okay, let's, let's check this edge. Is it covered? Yes, it is. Let's go to this edge. Is it covered? What, why yes, right? Let's go to this edge. Is it covered? Yep, definitely. Let's go to this edge. Is it covered? Yep. This edge? Yep. This edge? Yep. This edge? Yep. This edge? Yep. This is like a like an OE time algorithm, right? All of a sudden, right? When someone gives you a solution, you have a you have a very fast algorithm. This is polynomial time, by the way, right? A very fast algorithm that, that checks it. Okay, so it's kind of weird. It's like if you if you if someone just like 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 you know deleted this red, deleted all these like red spots on the on the like on the graph, right? All of a sudden the problem is opaque. You don't know how to solve it. But hey, the mom the, the moment someone just like you know like draws this in, holy crap, like it's it's obvious now. Like that's how you solve it. Right? So so problems in NP are when you can verify it in polynomial time. All right. So, so in other words, it, like vertex cover, vertex cover is in NP. So VC is in NP. Why? Because there, there are, there are, there is a polynomial time verifier, right? So, so let me be a bit formal about this, right? So I just need to say this one thing. Then, then I'll give you two more definitions, and then, then we'll be on our way, right? Um, when I say when I say VC is in NP, right? Let, let's be formal about this. This was this was very informal. What, what I'm saying is that there exists two things. All right. You can you you have a uh, you have you, if I if it's an MP, right, you have a certificate format, cert format, and a very and a polytime verifier. Okay. You have a cert format and a polytime verifier such that uh, if the input, if the original input, let's call it X. Uh, is a yes instance, meaning it's solvable. Okay, then your verifier, verifier algorithm, let's call that V, right? Given input X and given the certificate C, we'll say yes. I know this sounds very abstract, but just think about what, what we did for vertex cover, right? So for, for vertex cover, what should the certificate format be? The certificate format here should just be uh, a set of vertices. Right, that is the proposed cover. Okay, and think about what the verifier should be. The verifying algorithm should just be you going through all the edges and seeing what are covered, like like what is covered by 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 these edges, right? So that that's all I'm trying to say. So so this is saying, hey, uh, how to show problems in NP? To show problems in NP, right? You have to have a. You tell me what the certificate is, right? So a certificate. Think about it as the solution. Someone proposing a solution. That's what. That's what certificate is trying to say. What's the solution format, right? Okay. For vertex cover, the solution format should be a set of vertices. Okay. What kind of vertices do you care about? Well, give me a set of vertices that, that cover the edges, right? I mean, and and of course, like, of like over here of like of size at most k. So of size at most k. Right. Yeah. So certificate is solution. That's right. Um. Think of certif. So the reason why back then people said certify, if you think about it, is like you know, like when when like you've like graduated or like when you've like let's say uh like gone gone through high school or like your degree or something, they give you a cert they give you a certificate, right? That then you'll say like this is to certify that you know so and so has completed a, a a degree or like you know high school program at whatever school or something. So so this cert was kind of like a very like old school way of saying, hey, how do you prove that this is a true blue um yes instance? Well, some have someone certify it. Right, so so what certifies that this is a yes instance? The cover itself, 
right? So, for, so in the context of vertex cover, for example, what should the certified, what should the, the, the cert be? What, what should the solution be? Well, just giving the vertices, right? Uh, I know this sounds ridiculous and obvious, but I, but trust me, there are problems out there where it's difficult to figure out what the certificate is. <laughs> like, like I had to struggle through one of those before, but, but not in 330, so don't worry. Right? And, and you still need a polytime verifier. So it's like an algorithm that looks at the, the certificate and says, okay, um, let me take let me take your proposed solution, let me take the original input, you know, and make sure that this, the proposed solution is indeed like uh, it does indeed tell me that the, the input is a yes instead, right? Like so, you know, again, like I already mentioned it before this cover. All right. Okay, so so one last thing, one last thing before we go. There um there's a small concern when I say polynomial time, right? Um in case you have to go, because I, I actually have overshot. Uh, it's, it's just going to be five minutes, so you can look it up on the video on YouTube uh, when you can. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send a link to it in the group if you have to go. Uh, or if you want to go, that's fine too. Right? Uh, but there, there is one thing that I want to mention about this polytime business, which is which is actually kind of important. Because uh, I, I don't know if you'll ever be asked this uh, during exam or during during, uh, during during an assignment, or like maybe it's in your assignment, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think it is in your assignment, but anyway. Uh, let me ask you this. Let's say I have an algorithm. Let's call that algorithm F. It takes in input n, okay, and it uh, it does this for i in range n. Print hello. I'm pretty sure this is like good enough to be readable, All right? So I'm just saying I'm just saying iterate n times and print hello, right? Let me ask, right? What's the runtime for this? This is three two three zero. We analyze runtime. What's the runtime for this algorithm? It's not a trick question yet, by the way. Can you give me the runtime with respect to n? Like this should be something that you guys should already know how to do. O n, right? Okay. So why? Because like, I mean, it should be obvious, right? Like as n grows larger, like you print as you print as many as as many times as 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 uh, the value n is, right? Okay. So. So the runtime is on, right? Uh, let me ask you. Let me ask you this: Is the runtime is 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 this polytime? Is this a polynomial time algorithm? Let, let's say at the end of the day, it, it, it's it, uh, yeah, even outputs yes or whatever. You know? Okay, so so I see some yeses. Does anyone want to say no? There must be a reason why I'm asking this, right? Why am I asking this so late into the semester? You know, it's not it's not as if I don't trust you guys to understand what polynomial is, and I don't, it's not as if I don't trust you guys to understand what what on means. Right. I, I trust you guys on, on that much. Of course, definitely. Right. But but why why am I asking this question? Because it turns when, when see the thing is that when I say polynomial time, oh okay, no no no. So so let's say it outputs yes, no, like uh, something like that, right? That's actually not my concern. My concern is actually whether it really is polynomial time. It's not like a question of like it's not a question of like, oh, this is technically not an algorithm, that sort of thing. You know, I mean you can imagine something else, right? Like like uh like over some integer, like for example, we want to find a we want to find whether a number is prime. You still have to like from i for i in range like one to like square root of n, that sort of thing. That so so something similar still applies that. Like you know, decide whether it's a prime, like if you've not seen that algorithm before. Right. So 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 that one does output yes, no. So it has a very similar structure to this. But but I argue that this is actually isn't a polynomial time algorithm. It's actually an exponential time algorithm. Right to 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 see why to see why, right to see why think think about what what goes into the in, so let's say this is the input box for 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 the algorithm, right? I know that it's supposed to be some value n, right? But what is the length of the input here? How many bits do I need to represent the input? Log n, right? So the like it's it's some bits here in binary, right? And and the the length of the input here is log n, right? My my run the runtime of this algorithm is O n, which is O two to the log base two n, right? Which is O two to the power of the length of the input. Now it, now if this doesn't make sense to you, right? Think about the runtimes. Think think about how the runtime scales, and when, when I put just one. So if let's say my input was just one, right? You know it's only one iteration. So the runtime is like one, right? You only do one iteration. Okay, that's fine. What happens if I put a zero here? My I've increased my input length by one, right? My input length only increased by one, right? Because you see it's it's from length one to a length two input now. But but my runtime doubles. It's now my now I have to run two iterations. Right? What happens if I add another zero? Okay, I've increased my input length from two to three, right? But what what is my runtime? 
my runtime is four. Let's add another zero. My runtime is now eight. Let's add another zero. My runtime is now 16, 32, 64, 128, 512, 1,074. Did I miss any value? I think I missed like 256. But, but see, every time I add one zero, just adding one zero, right, doubles my runtime, right? So that, that's, an, that's an exponential runtime, right? Every time I add, add one, one bit of my input, my, my, my runtime actually doubles. So the running time of this algorithm isn't polynomial, it's actually exponential. I mean, I, I, know, I know ON says polynomial, right? But N here is, is not the true length of the input. That's how you should see it. The true length of the input is log N, okay? So, so okay, I, I know like some of you guys might be panicking right now, like, holy crap, does this mean that everything I've been taught is wrong, you know? Like, like, have, have, like every time someone says, uh, depends on how you define input size, um, fair. Um, but this is the this is the canonical definition that we that we actually come up with, and the reason the reason why the reason why this um, doesn't ruin too much, right? Like I said, because in case like some of you guys might be panicking right now, like holy crap, like like so every time we've said polynomial were wrong, uh, the answer is no, not quite, <laughs> not quite. So um, the reason why the reason why that's not the case, the reason why that's not the case is because the only time that you actually have to worry about it, right, is when your runtime is contingent on an integer. Like when, when it is, then you then you start worrying a bit, right? Uh, so like for example, for example, let's say I have some problem that has a graph and like a like an integer k, and let's say I promise you that k is going to be some value that that ranges from let's say one to the size of the vertices. So 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 this is a this is let's say a set of vertices, right? So 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 let me let me redefine this. Let let's put let's put uh t here. So I know that this is going to be a set that looks like this, V1 to VT already, right? So in other words, my input is going to be like this, V1 to VT. And then, then some, some integer that is at most log T bits long, right? Okay, so if I have an algorithm that runs in OK time, no pun intended, by the way. So if I, now, if I have an algorithm that runs in OK time, right? This is, this is fine, right? Because I know that OK is... Uh, going to be two to the power of t and two to the power of t at most, right? But this is still OT time. Now, now, uh, now this looks exponential, right? But but that's fine. This is still fine because your input your input length is your input length here is t plus another log t. So this is okay, right? But if if I just give you only integers, start worrying. Right. If I only give you integers, then you have to be like, okay, like my input is only just some integer and, and you're running time OT. Like nothing else at the back, right? What's your input length? Your input length isn't T anymore. Your input length is just log T. Then, then okay, start sweating. Like maybe it's not polynomial time after all. All right. I, like, I'm just saying this because in case like you were ever asked about this, because I know in my T2C0 finals, um, that was the last question. Like someone said, give a reduction and then ask, uh, does this, uh, is this reduction in polynomial time? A lot of people answered yes. Uh, the, the answer was actually no, be because of this, like because of this very specific thing. Like the reduction runs in time like OT, where T is an integer. And there was no other thing like, like besides T. Some, something along those lines, something along those lines. I mean, there were actually other things, but like, let's, let's, not, let's not complicate it. So, so the answer was no, that was the correct answer. The correct answer was no. All right, so I'm just saying, I'm just saying, right? When you have an integer, right? You have some runtime with respect to an integer, just, just, just be careful, all right? Sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not. Just just make sure to check. So so when is it? Why is it that in, in, uh, let's see? Why is the input integer t is bounded? We can say it's not exponential. Because okay, so remember our runtimes right have to be contingent with input length, right? So so if let's say if let's say I I give you some for example right like some input v to t and then some some integer k right and I say k here is going to be at most t, right? Uh, what is the input length? So, so let me draw in yellow, like how many bits are needed for the input, all right? Uh, over here, you need t at, at the very least t bits, right? I mean, actually t log t, but let's not complicate things further. T, t bits of input, right? And over here, you need log t. So, so what's my total input length? My total input length is like something like t, log, t plus log t, right? So, so this is my input length. Okay, so if let's say I have an algorithm that runs in time, okay. Right, k, k here I know is represented using log t bits. 
right? So if so, so in other words, right? I mean, like, like for example, let's just say this value here is t. That's what I'm trying to say, right? So if like if like let's, if if for example, I say that my runtime here is o t. That's fine, right? Even though there's an integer, even though it's like with respect to an integer here, because it's uh, it's respect if it's, it's with respect to the input length, right? So so my input length, right, has a log t here. That's fine, right? Two to the log t is fine, right? Because like I have a t here. So if my input is an integer n and the actual input size is log n, thus making the complexity exponential with respect to the input size. Yes, that's right. So, so the, the answer to your question is yes. But Kendrick, do you see do you see what I mean? So, so, so I guess let me do a contrast. Let me do a contrast. So, if I had, if I have, uh, but this in case t uh, t but this is not integer. That's right. So, so okay. So, 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 so let me do a contrast, right? So, I'm saying in this case it's not exponential, right? Let me show you a case where it is exponential. Just the value k itself. I mean, in this case, t can, k can be bounded as well, by the way, it's fine. Like k can be bounded by some value t. That, that, that's actually okay. This is still exponential. Yeah, if it's k, yeah, yeah. So, so this is still exponential. Good question. This is still exponential. So, so your runtime will be like OT, right? Like for example, let's say we do the for loop thing. The for loop thing that we did just now. Pretend I wrote the for loop thing. So like for i is equals to one to like from for i i in, in range like k, right? This is still exponential, right? Because how many? Okay, look at the input length, right? So so let's count the input, like the input length. What's the input length? The input length is just the number of bits required to represent k, right? How many bits do you need? Log k bits. I mean, okay, let's say log t log t bits, right? Is there anything else in the input? Nah, there isn't. It's it's really just this guy, right? So, so, so in, in the bottom right case, right, this is my input length. Do you see what I mean? So over here, right, notice that, yeah, I have a log t and I can do two to the power of t, that's fine because there is something really long here anyway. So I, I'm only doing like exponential with respect to like a very short portion of the input, right? So what I'm trying to say is that like okay, yeah don't don't worry about like most of the details. All I'm saying is that when you see like an integer, right, take a bit of care in case there's a trick question, because I know they they exist. All right. So so if it's by itself, yeah, you're right. It's exponential. If it's if it's by it's with, if it's with something else, you see like this t here that's accompanying it, right? Like like you know that this input is like super long. This thing is really long and you're just gonna be, oh, I'm gonna just gonna take a really small chunk and be exponential with it. That's fine because you're still, you're still, you're still, you're still polynomial with respect to the rest of the input, right? But but if I take this, this chunk and this is like all of the input and all of a sudden I'm like running really, really like long with respect to that input, then okay, that's, that's slow. That's all I wanna say. That's all I'm trying to say, right? So, so I don't think you'll see in your assignment because I, I, I'm not very sure, right? I'm just saying be careful. I'm just saying be careful, okay? All right, so so that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, um, if you have any more questions, I'll of course always be happy to answer them on Telegram, right? Post them in the group, in fact, I think it'll be like, it'll be much more interesting because then at least other people get to learn. And sometimes people ask me duplicate questions, then I have to like answer them again and again. So I think posting in the group might be better, all right? But if not, if not, that's all, sorry I overshot. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. No worries. Bye-bye. Hope you guys have a great week ahead.